All right, sports fans, thank you for bearing with us. Sorry about that. OBS is running. I don't actually, I'm not actually in chat yet. Um, but we'll get all of that booted up. And we'll get kicked off momentarily. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand over the microphone to Coach Spector here. He's going to give us a quick breakdown of the Oregon team. And uh, we're going to get this uh, road on the show. Good evening, sports fans. Coach Spector here, the coach of the Washington State Cougars. We are number one playing against number 15, Oregon, traveling to the Otson Zoo to take on the Ducks. They are led by Marcus Carter. The quarterback is a 94 with a lot of speed uh, so far on the year. 23-6 uh, and six touchdowns to interception ratio with a 165 rating. You figure any uh, computer quarterback uh, rated above 140 is quality on the quarterback rating. Rushing-wise, he will take off. He's got 465 yards rushing at 750 last year, getting over 50 yards a game. Halfback, uh, Jeffrey Whitworth is a 91, with Weber backing him up as an 89. And Whitworth is getting 83 yards a game with 10 touchdowns and pitching in 30 yards receiving, so they will throw the ball to him uh, on a fair number of occasions. Uh, Weber is certainly part of the uh, offense, not as much as last year when, when Whitworth got hurt, uh, but he does contribute, obviously, as you see there. Not much of a fullback, really the only weak spot on the team, and you figure they probably don't use him that much, uh, which holds true. Only three carries for six yards, only two catches for 17, so he shouldn't see the field that much and shouldn't be too much a part of their game plan. At receiver, they got one leader, one quality player behind him, um, getting 74 yards a game is Butler, the leading receiver. Uh, Taylor contributing with 52. And Garcia contributing with 32 yards per game. So the wide receivers getting about 150. Burnett, uh, not really that effectual. They'll throw it to him only when he's wide open. 26 yards a game. The offensive line, uh, left, to right, left to right across your radio dial, is Pollard at 87 then a 91 guard, a 92 center, an 88 guard, so strong in the interior, and an 81 true freshman right tackle. That's a stud freshman. He's only an 81, but he's obviously going to play better than that because he's a stud. So a solid offensive line across the board. An injured defensive end. We'll check that in a minute. I actually, I, or I can tell you I already checked it, um, and I believe that he will be playing. Um, an 89 there. A 91 there, a 95 and a 91 really particularly strong in the interior uh, and really across the board of the defensive line. A trademark of some of the top 10 teams, Oregon 15th, but they usually set up camp inside the top 10 and you can see why with that front four. Uh, linebacking core, uh, no slouch either, 92, 92, 93. No starter at the linebacking core lower than a 92, uh, really no weak spots there. Um, cornerbacks, uh, you know, they have the two starters, an impact player uh, in Stanley, and 86 and an 87. So the secondary, uh, really the only part of the defense that's at all human. The front seven uh, in the box should all be uh, 91 or above, which uh, is going to cause a lot of problems. Um, uh, so, you know, you see... Oregon having a lot of strength really across the board. No real weak spots. No points to attack. Uh, and uh, we just hope that we're able to play our A game. We're expecting quite the battle uh, going into this game. Taking nothing for granted. Uh, don't care about stats. Just want to get the win. So I'm going to turn it over to Coach uh, Ninja. And he's going to take over the play-by-play -play for my game coming up. And then, well, of course, as you know, uh, fans of the stream... We will trade places for the second game of our doubleheader when his number five Penn State Nittany Lions travel to the Horseshoe to take on number seven Ohio State. We've got a couple of massive games tonight uh, in some really high-ranked battles that could have a huge impact on this year's national title race. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Coach Ninja and do my best to get the W.
All right, thank you, Coach. Let's get this kicked off. Looking at the at team stats here, it's a very impressive points for g per game for Oregon, but uh, hard to beat the number two points per game defense of Washington State and the number one yards per game overall and rushing. Um, on the other hand, looking at Oregon's defense, number 62 against the pass, a lot better than 110 Sorry, against the rush. Uh, 62 against the rush, a lot better than 110th against the pass. Uh, right. Indeed. A uh, number of visiting prospects this week for the Oregon Ducks. Some good, high-quality prospects there. Um Important players, D-tackle, quarterback, and right outside linebacker all highly rated, and a lot of guys right near them. Um, but uh, we'll see P.D. Pablo, Jack Garrick, and John McClain if Indiana Jones needs a break. And it is a snow game in Oregon. Coach Spectre there on the sidelines. Cold's not affecting him. He's only in a windbreaker. Beautiful cascades in the background just behind a haze of snow. Washington State now 8-2 and two in the coin toss for the season. Eight. Sorry, 2-8. and eight. Yes, 2-8. and eight. My apologies. They have a terrible record winning coin tosses this year, but a much better record winning games as we see them make adjustments to account for what they expect to see from Oregon this game. A gentle wind as the snow floats down. Right into the end zone, not that you'd know. You can barely see it underneath the snow. I must say, I am disappointed in Oregon's ground crew. They should have done a better job showing us where the 10-yard increments are. The counter to the right by Whitworth goes for 32 yards, and the Ducks are hurrying up. 
Coming out single back, and I don't know if that's a full back or tight end there behind on the left. I think it's the tight end. Similar play, run to the right, and Whitworth gets another six, sorry, 26 yards to speed downfield on the ground. Two of Washington State's defenders already needing some oxygen on the sidelines as uh, Oregon, Oregon is, is bringing the pace early. Next time we see single back Weber. And there's the sack. Looks like uh, Oregon was getting a little tired too on that. They brought in the second halfback. This time, Oregon is coming out four wide receivers and a single back. This time, the single backs lined up offset to the left. The sack misses. But he throws the ball away to the far end of the end zone. And he's forcing the field goal. Fourth and 18. Doesn't look like that kicker has too much of a leg, but they were close, and it is a score. Three points for Oregon to take the start of the game. Uh, two really long runs, and then a lot of Washington State in the backfield. As Blofeld catches the kickoff and runs it out of the end zone for a 17-yard return. Indiana Jones coming out to take the field. Now, it was the typical first play middle slant from Washington State, but uh, as you can see, they uh, elect not to throw the ball into bad coverage, and dangerous coverage, I should say, and uh, come with the looping scramble to get five yards by Indiana Jones. Single back, one tight end on the right. And Jones keeps it. Gets it just over the line in order to get first down. Single back on the right, tight end, uh, lined up outside, if at all. And Jones throws off target on his first pass attempt of the game. Bobbing and weaving through three or four defenders there. Jones gets the first down on the ground again after, again, tight coverage on a middle slant.
McLean in at quarterback in an eye formation. The handoff to Rickman goes for five, up the gut to the left. Indiana Jones returns as we see a three-man front against a single back shotgun. The handoff to Rickman goes for an easy 10 yards. There was a lot of open space on the other side of that defensive line, and the three down linemen were quite spread out. That shotgun separated them nicely, and Alan Rickman ran right through the gap. And Jones gets sacked for a loss of seven. An excellent job by Rickman to take 14 yards out of that big second and long. It's only third and four now, quite manageable after that pass up the middle to the halfback. They're in duck territory on the 37-yard line. Once again, we see three down linemen and two linebackers, it looks like. And two high safeties. And that's the first, no, that's the second completion. Rickman, Rickman uh, caught his. Uh, that's the second completion uh, on consecutive plays even to uh, get the first down after a second and 17. It's a good recovery. Mm-hmm. Three down linemen, but they're tight this time. Lined up right in the middle. Rickman gets the ball, and this time it goes outside to the left. And gets five yards, unable to break the edge. But good progress nonetheless. Four down linemen this time. A lot of linebackers. Everybody stacked up on that left side. Jones keeps it. He dodges one defensive guy and runs it in for a touchdown.
sends this one deep. And Washington State kicks it out of the back of the end zone. Oregon's going to start with their with the ball in the 20 yard line. Looks like they're bringing out one half back and four receivers there down by four. Minute and 11 seconds left to go in the first. They hand it off to Whitworth. This time he only gets one yard. Should bring his average down to about 20 per carry. Single back, four wide receivers spread out, trip right. That's a quick, uh, a quick uh, uh, pass over to Antonio Garcia, who only gets one yard. We continue to see this hurry-up offense from Oregon on third and eight. And the sack takes down Carter, and that's three and out. Looks like one t time for one more play in in the quarter as uh, Washington State comes out with the tight end and the halfback lined up on the right. Spread wide receivers. Jones is scrambling. He gets some distance from the ends. And he gets tackled just short of the first down marker heading into the second. Rickman makes a good read and dashes left of the tackle rather than right in order to make it six yards instead of first down. Washington State's now on Oregon's 34-yard line. Blofeld does a fantastic job to slip the defender who was right next to him to turn that into a 12-yard gain. On the 22, Washington State is just outside the red zone. Jones, unable to get past the linebacking core, gets a four-yard rush on the option. Make it second and six. And Vivaldi drags his feet through the snow to catch the lob pass.
think about the challenges these two teams are facing. On one side, you've got to find a way to keep building on your lead, and on the other side, you've got to find a way to get back in it. And they make the stop at the 25. Whitworth this time zero yards attempting to get outside to the right after lining up on the left. Now we see him lined up on the right. Tight end also on the right. This time up on the line of scrimmage instead of behind it. Team tackling slows down Whitworth. Only gets one yard. It is now third and long. Vivaldi, I believe, is quite young. He, Oh, I'm sorry. He's a junior. Um, but I don't believe I've called enough his name enough times. That's a good point. Maybe in his, maybe in his senior year, uh, Washington State has never been a particularly tight end, tight end heavy team. Uh, but that's because they haven't had a great one. It's a hard-to-recruit position. Maybe as a senior, uh, it will be worth Vivaldi uh, having one of his namesake's songs in the uh, in the repertoire, but uh, is not currently there, as Jack Kerouac makes a fantastic 28-yard return. So, yeah, look uh, look forward uh, to, uh, to next season when Antonio Vivaldi uh, is a senior starter and uh, we'll probably see more, more plans for the tight end out of Washington State and therefore more touchdowns and yardage for Antonio Vivaldi. As in Nana Jones shows w us what a archaeologist can do on the field. Um, getting 22 yards on the r ground with probably another 30 yards laterally. Now, well within the red zone, Indiana Jones, um, he's a little bit tired from being chased by that boulder. As we see McLean come in for the eye. The duck defender there uh, sheds the block and manages to um, prevent Rickman, excuse me, from getting more than two yards. As we now see a uh, flex bone, I believe, from uh, Washington State as Gary Sneeze goes in motion and Indiana Jones gets caught for two yards as the defense closes quickly on Jones. And Jones is down. On third down, third and seven, it looks like, uh, yeah, um, McLean is in the game. Washington State lucky to have a fantastic backup as the pass to Ernst Blofeld gets caught and he pushes himself to not only the first down but the touchdown. As we now see Coach on the sideline looking in, seeing what the medic has to say. Looks like Jones with the back spasms. He's going to get a shot of cortisone, and he's going to be back hopefully for the, uh, for the next half. Maybe even the next drive if he's lucky. We'll see what Doc says on the sidelines. Cougars, he's quarterback, taken off earlier. Down 
sideline right now. Doesn't look like he's in that much pain. Even if uh, Indiana Jones is sitting for a while, uh, Washington State is up by 18. That's three scores. Once again, Whitworth breaking some tackles, gets 16 yards. This time, Carter keeps it on the option, gets eight yards. That's defense bites on Whitworth. Quarterback is able to uh, get away from the scrum in the middle and thankfully only gets bounced for a couple of yards. Gibson does a great job to catch Whitworth in the backfield and get him for negative yardage. We see five wide here from Oregon. As we know from looking at their roster before this game, they don't have a tremendous amount of depth at wide receiver. And the uh, ball bounces off. A ball bounces off the uh, the young slot receiver Marcus Carr's uh, hands. Um, clock stops, but looks like Oregon is still in hurry up mode on third and very long. And another drop ball means that Carter is one for five and Oregon is forced to punt. One yard passing so far this half for Oregon. Yeah. All right. So, uh, a fantastic job. We're going to see. Looks like Jones is back. Got the back spasms under control. And uh, we're going to see what uh, Washington State can do with a minute 47 and three timeouts. Jones gets 14 yards and runs out of bounds without getting tackled. Blofeld takes the pitch and gets an extra 10 yards, moves 20 yards downfield and runs out of bounds to stop the clock. Washington State now in Oregon territory. They're on the 46-yard line. 
and moving downfield rapidly. That is a miracle play from Indiana Jones to, to get out of that scrum before even getting the pass off to Ernst Blofeld. And we see Washington State take a timeout, stop the clock, give some rest to Indiana Jones as he got absolutely beaten up. And right to Hannibal Lecter as he came across the field right underneath it. Perfect timing. Get into the 8-yard line. Clock's moving, but it's a minute and 18 left to go. This time Lecter coming from the left. He gets 6 yards. It's the 2-yard line. Oregon gets the ball back with 59 seconds and three timeouts. It's enough time to try and do something, but they've been terrible through the air, particularly so far uh, this game. Team tackling, Jet on Jeffrey Whitworth, he gets caught short. It is second and one. Costs Oregon a timeout and five seconds. They're coming out again, single back, four wide receivers. Marcus Carter again puts it right on his receiver's hands and they cannot catch it. Seems like this right seems like the defenders are well covering them and that their hands have turned to stone. It's now third and one. <laughs> Whitworth manages to fall forward to get to get the yardage needed to get first down. Earth, Wind, and Fire comes in, gets that sack. Second down and long now after the penalty. Guess the wrong direction, but that's fine. 
And Whitworth keeps it on the ground. Looks like one more play. A much better offensive game. 17 passing yards, 72 rushing yards for Oregon in 4 minutes and 58 seconds. Whereas we're talking at about 108, 145 for Washington State in 9. Quick check of the game stats here. As we see, a total offense of 250 yards in the first half versus 89 yards. On a snowy day like today, 9 out of uh, 10 uh, passing attempts is very good for Washington State. As we see, 3 out of 8 for Oregon. Uh, similarly, third down conversion for Oregon, 2 out of 6, is uh, making it difficult. And luckily, uh, today our sideline reporter was lucky enough to have a quick interview, not with the head coach, but with, um, with uh, I believe it's, I think, the linebacking coach from Washington State. Coach, coach Conan, um, what is it that, uh, uh, that, that you think is, 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 is best in football? Um, you, you messed up my joke. That's what happened. You messed up my joke. <laughs> Your linebacker coach isn't a character. Where does it say that? Jones gets hit, but he gets the ball away before he gets hit. Rickman catches the ball, gets hit, and bounces forward to make it third and manageable. And the ability of the receiver to keep his concentration and get his hands on the football. Nice 
Alan Rickman gets the handoff from the shotgun, runs it six, seven yards forward for the first down. Massive play on the option by Indiana Jones. Washington State now up 35-3. to three. After a big run by Indiana Jones for a 30-yard touchdown on the ground. 40-yard touchdown on the ground, I'm sorry. Earthwind and Fire comes in, bringing the pressure, forces Carter to throw it away. Second and ten. And this time Perry is in with the sack. It is going to be third and sixteen. Back-to-back -back sacks there. This time, Earthwind and Fire with it. Fourth and 23. They're going to be forced to punt. Down by this many scores, Oregon is being forced to go to the air, and they just don't seem to have it in the snow today. A solid return there from Kerouac, 18 yards. And Washington State starts with a very short field. They're on the 37-yard line. They're practically already in field goal range with the kind of legs that they have at Washington State. Jones doesn't see a look that he likes. He scrambles with a hop, skip, and a jump. He gets four yards and is pushed out of bounds. McLean is in. We see the eye. Hand off to Rickman. Gets two. It's going to be third and three. Rickman only has 38 yards, but he's got a 5.4 yard average. Drag route to Blofeld goes for six yards, unable to escape the second defender.
And on first down, we see John McClain again. A fantastic 19-yard run by Rickman. He bounces out to the left side and breaks a few tackles to get 19 yards, increase his average to 7.1, which is just phenomenal this deep in the game. And Rickman breaks a tackle and pulls across the line. Couple of three and outs so far. We'll see what, if anything, Oregon's able to do. They are. That was an incredible. Uh, no, but uh, he he literally slid two yards on the ground to make that sack. It's like it's like he was a he was a bowling ball to get that sack. That was phenomenal. You don't make that. You don't make that if it's not snowing. Whitworth tackled in the backfield. I don't know. It's now third and eighteen. And it is Allen Ginsberg with the pick. Sixth pick of the year. Gives another short field to Washington State. Indiana Jones passes it and hits uh, Alan Rickman in the shoulder blades. Was not ready for it. Second down. 
There are five wide receivers split out. The quarterback in the gun. He's scrambling. Runs with it, and he's got room. He's taken down at the 22-yard line. So it's third down now, and they're going to need about four. This time, Rickman makes the cut, sees the ball, makes the catch for the first down. Gets hit immediately and still holds on to it. Fantastic catch. Rickman, only one yard. Jones scrambles into space, loops around, gets 11 yards. Six yards, five seconds in the half. Ernst Blofeld right over the middle. Fight, fight, fight for Washington State. Win the victory. Win the day for crimson and gray. Best in the West. We know you'll all do your best. So on, 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 on. Fight till the end. Honor and glory you must win. So fight, fight, fight for Washington State and Vic. Sorry. He makes the PAT. So a seven play, 30 yard drive, and they put up seven points. Brad, I thought that was a textbook drive. I thought they did a really good job of showing balance, mixing the play calling with the run and the pass. Just an overall well executed touchdown drive. Looks like they're ready for the kick. Sends it sailing downfield. 
This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. Washington State's defense, they've got the it factor. The it factor, the swagger, whatever you want to call it. When they take the field, they know they're better than you. And it's a group of 11. They play like they know they're going to Oh, got that in. Hey, you're out of your forward to see if it's up. So we can go back to <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how much fight this team has left in it. This has been a brutal game. <laughs> Coach Stradam is predicting the draw, and Washington State brings the hammer, the anvil, the pickup truck, the tank, the boat, and the aircraft carrier, and the kitchen sink into the middle to stop the draw. Uh, loss of five yards. And that is uh, Alexandre Dumas there with the interception. Uh, yeah, uh, cornerback for wa for for wa for Washington State and um, ne next year's star and of course um, great 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 grandson of acclaimed general of the French Revolution. Indiana Jones, unable to get away from the closing defender, gets sacked only for a loss of zero. Um, not, not the worst thing in the world as a result of corner blitz. You don't see a whole lot of corner blitz. Uh, it's very dangerous in this game, particularly against a, a player like Indiana Jones who will uh, be able to pass into that blitz. Jones scrambles and falls forward and makes third and inches. Again, uh, fantastic field position off of the second uh, drive for Oregon ended by uh, interception. Second in a row. Another st important story of this game is that uh, uh, Washington State, with John McClain now in at quarterback out of the eye, um, third and inches and handoff to Gary Sinise is there now six and six on third down conversions a fantastic third down conversion rate in a uh, pounding game like this in the snow in Oregon against waterfowl Rickman keeps the ball and goes to the outside for a six-yard rush. His average has come down a little. It's now only 6.4. Indiana Jones, 17 rushes for 178 yards. This is the eighth 
Three down linemen here. As you see, a single back from Washington State. Jones, it counts as a sack because it is behind the line of scrimmage. That is a loss of one yard. It's now third and 11. And Indiana Jones runs it across for the touchdown. Oregon getting the ball back. Two minutes and three seconds. Three timeouts. Uh, they have been terrible through the air so far this game. But they've got to do something through the air now in order to get any points on the board. Uh, any more points on the board uh, before this game ends. They have not scored since their opening drive. Yeah, looks like uh, Oregon uh, perhaps not uh, trying to be too aggressive here, bringing out a fullback. Hand off to Butler, uh, who I believe is a wide receiver, but he only gets four on the ground. And this time, they uh, d don't gain anything. They, in fact, lose a little. It's now third and seven as they try and to hurry up while they're running uh, on the ground in a two-minute drill. This is bizarre. And the screen pass. Uh, the defender's there. It's enough to force um, the, uh, the, 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 force the, the, the guy to take too long, and it's going to make the punt happen. Another excellent return for Kerouac, 18 yards this time. 
437 total yards, 56 points uh, for Washington State versus 70 yards and three points for Oregon. A apocalyptic game at the zoo. Jerry Reed holds on to the ball, and he's fresh, and he runs for a couple extra yards, make it second and two. 55 seconds left to go in Oregon Territory. Blofeld on the drag, gets tackled immediately. And it bounces off the Cougars' hands. He has a second chance at it, but so does the defender. The incompletion stops the clock. 24 seconds. Antonio, Antonio Vivaldi, 11 yards in four seconds. Washington State now on the 29-yard line. Clock has stopped. And with 13 seconds left to go, Oregon's going to get one more chance to maybe attempt to do something, but looks like we're going to go home. This is going to be a 60-point win, a 60-point atrocity by Washington State. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the coaching staff are, uh, uh, names are passed around the Hague talking about uh, you know potential crimes against humanity after this. see anything nasty and pointless at the end. And he's tackled after positive yardage. Less than 100 yards. That is a fantastic game, both from the Washington State offense and defense, and really quite a disappointing game. Uh, from the Oregon Ducks, unexpected in the snow. Um, uh, absolute. I mean, it was was slow going early in the passing game, but uh, eventually, you know, uh, Washington State figured out how to get it done in the air. Oregon 
never able to, and and o with only Whitworth as as a weapon that worked, uh, Oregon, you know, Washington State was able to say we're not we're not giving you him, and you ain't got nothing else. 58 yards in the first two plays and ending the game with 70 yards. That's a big disappointment. An absolutely insane game, a terrible game from Oregon. They will I I don't I wouldn't I, I would I wouldn't be surprised if they plummeted even out of the top 25 after that loss. It depends on what the rest of their record is, but that's a terrible loss. Nineteen yards after the first possession. That's uh, that's not that's not good. Yeah. 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 All around an excellent game from Washington State and really a. Quite terrible one. Yeah. Yeah. Rickman ends with a 5.8. Yeah. I mean, for the rest of the way, you know, I, since you ask, um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure who else you you have this uh, this season, but you you know, your next couple of games, you're going to be going in, you know, red hot at a lot of positions at quarterback, at receiver, at both of those both of those defenders, Fire and um, and Perry are going to be red hot. Dumont and Ginberg are going to be hot. I mean, it's whoever it is is you're going to you're going to come into those games rip roaring ready to go. All right. So uh, thank you for joining us. We're going to get this game in the record books here and going to do a quick hardware swap. Get uh, get the other uh, the other Xbox spun up and we will get kicked off with Washington State at sorry. Penn State at Oregon State, the second game of our doubleheader, uh, will begin shortly.
sports. It's in the game. Good evening, sports fans. Second game of our doubleheader featuring number five, Penn State, traveling to the shoe, the horseshoe, the home of the Ohio State Buckeyes. They're ranked seventh this year. Five versus seven in week 12. Late season matchup with two top ten teams. You know it's going to have implications in the national title race. This one shows Penn State coming in with a third ranked defense versus the number one ranked offense of Ohio State. They are sixth in rushing and 22nd in passing. Seventh against the run, but 114th against the pass. Penn State, of course, coming in with a plus seven turnover differential, putting them in the top ten in the country. I'm going to pass the microphone off to Coach Ninja, who just gave you the play-by-play -play on my game with Washington State. 
and he's going to give you the pregame scouting report for these Ohio State Buckeyes. Thanks, Coach. As you can see here, um, the right end Williams is doubtful, so he won't play, but the free safety Roberts is probable, so he will play. Um, we know that going into uh, looking at Ohio State's roster. Yeah. So a quick look down here at Ohio State. They have a 98 quarterback who has 82 speed, 91 acceleration, 75 awareness. He passes for 240 for 240 yards a game, and he rushes for 50 yards a game. So they use him on the ground, and he's got a decent average. That average doesn't tell me he, he options that he scrambles. I could be wrong about that. 70-30. All right. Um, yeah, he is a first-year starter. That means he does have low awareness. All right, so 97 halfback. They use this guy. They get 124 yards a game on the ground and another 36 through the air. He's getting yeah, yeah, he's getting 150 yards a game. Um, he's an impact player for a reason. And looks like they tend to use uh, Wiggins, the second halfback, as well. Because um, he's getting 56 yards a game on the ground. Two, that is two halfbacks. Fullback is pretty lousy. Don't expect to see a lot of them. One fantastic receiver getting 100 yards a game in Walker. The next guy gets 40. The next guy gets 25. Hart is getting 72 yards a game. Hart as yeah, as the wide receiver and the starting tight end, so they keep him on the field. They're playing to Walker. They're playing to Hart through the air, and they're playing to both of the both of the halfbacks. And at least as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm keying on Daniels and letting them do what they want with Wiggins. All right, on the line they've got an 88, a 92, an 83. An 87 and a 90 so it's not an amazing line but it's a solid well-balanced line with good guys to give back up to the weak spots on defense we see that here that Williams is the backup he's injured so their backup isn't great it means the backup across the board is is Parker uh, but they've got slaughter who's fantastic impact player and and you know got speed uh, and Brown also a serious impact player fantastic acceleration those ends are going to be dangerous as are the D tackles 93-91 fantastic D tackles 86 97 86 great middle linebacker he's going to make up for the fact that the outside linebackers aren't 90s but they're 86s they're good 290 corners, 285 corners is a solid cornerbacking core uh, with a lot of speed there. Senior, uh, the 85s are sophomore. They're both sophomores. Mm. And then a free safety 85 and a strong safety 78 is the weakest link on their team. Uh, on their team, let alone you know the the which side of the ball. So you know he'll he'll. Uh, He'll be decent because he is a true freshman, but uh, overall, Ohio State, an excellent, dangerous team um, that we're going to have to work hard to, uh, to overcome. So I'm going to hand the headset back, and we're going to get started. Excellent scouting report there by Coach Ninja. Sets the stage. For this top seven battle between 299 overalls, both rosters stacked. Coach Ninja, of course, now in his 
during in the middle of his fifth season at Penn State, he's had four recruiting classes to build them up. The team uh, is now completely his team, and uh, rather the roster. They are they are there might be one or two redshirt seniors remaining uh, from previous coaching staffs, but uh, for the most part, uh, Coach Ginger has his signature on this team. And uh, it's traveling to the horseshoe to take on, as we just saw, a very solid Ohio State roster. As stated, there is Ohio State's number one yards per game offense, number six in rushing, number 22 in passing. Defensively, as we mentioned before, seventh against the run, 114th against the pass. I'll give you one guess as to what Penn State's game plan might entail. Ohio State bringing in plenty of good recruits into this game as the Nittany Lions hope to spoil that party, which could have long-term impacts on the Buckeyes recruiting. It's a bright sunny day in Ohio, unlike it was on the West Coast in Oregon earlier this afternoon. As we see the horseshoe painted in red. Of course, the horseshoe no longer quite the horseshoe. It's not connected completely there on the end, but that stand on one end of the field, uh, relatively new in the last 10, 15 years. major deciding game in the Big Ten East, if not the national title picture, featuring five versus seven. Singletary and Clark out there for the coin toss. As the famous huge flagpole waves old glory. Red, bright, and blue overlooking this game. Penn State loses the toss, gets the kickoff to start the game. Riddick fumbles it, takes it out of the end zone. And Michael Jackson's his way up to the 18-yard line as we get this game started. see in the early going Penn State making some early formation changes to some of the formations they're going to start the game with a five wide set hits the easy pass takes the two or three yard completion turns it into five a couple of yards after the catch but the safe completion on first on the first play of the game a popular choice among coaches we play as has been stated before with an advanced slider set from operation sports that's been slightly tweaked against the user and uh, as such getting that quarterback warmed up a very crucial part of a team's success they're now going to come out in the eye tight they've got two tight ends in a tight formation four down linemen for the Buckeyes Brit up the gut. Three yards. Going to set up third and two here in the early going. It's the eye tight again. You see the ISO called so far for the Nittany Lions. It's a two-yard loss. Ohio State was ready for it. Jerome Day with the tackle for a loss. Looks like the right outside linebacker coming in off the edge to make the stop. Uh, Penn State forced punt here on the first drive of the game. Hello, Tate Baker. 
Goodbye, Tate Baker. That punt's going to go directly out of bounds. But not too bad of a situation as Ohio State finds themselves on their own 32. Given the three and out to start the game, not a bad situation for the Penn State defense. Ohio State not exactly enjoying fantastic field position. The handoff to Daniels up the gut. He manages to fall forwards for five yards. Turns a three-yard gain into five on the first play of the ball game. Welcome back to Eight Baker. Hart. Corey Hart with a nine-yard catch on second down. And Ohio State now employing the no-huddle offense. You imagine they'll be doing that for the remainder of the ball game as Coach Ninja. He's going to line up with a three-man front. Daniels off to the left side. Breaks his way out to a 19-yard gain. And that's going to put the ball at the Penn State Looks to be about the 35-yard line. Daniels up the gut again. It's going to be a no-gain play. Coach Ninja, of course, focusing on Daniels here in the early going, looking to take away the Ohio State running game. They run a screen pass, breaks the first tackle, but not the second. Corey Hart gets tackled for a one-yard loss. Now going to set up third and long. Four by receivers for the Buckeyes. It's a screen pass to Wiggins, the backup halfback. Breaks the tackle and able to get the first down. A 16-yard play. Going to give the Buckeyes a fresh set of downs at about the 21-yard line, it looks like. First down to the left side to Corey Hart. He's got three catches already. Three of the first four completions by Marcus Church going to Corey Hart. That one there gets the first down. To the right side this time to Hart. His fourth catch in the first quarter. Incomplete pass as Church unable to get behind the, the halfback who stayed in the backfield at the pass block but got in the quarterback's way. Causes Church to make the smart decision and get rid of the football quickly. Now third and goal. Church hits Johnson, but Penn State able to make the tackle at the one-inch line. They got six. They needed six, but they needed a little bit more than six. Unable to get it. Now going to be fourth down. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. Daniels up the middle. Able. They're going to call it a yard. It was more like an inch. They called it a yard. It was more like an inch. I've had a few girlfriends say that to me. The 
Extra point up and good, giving the Buckeyes the early lead. Their first drive successful. Anybody who's played this game with any frequency or longevity knows that the first drive, one of the hardest drives to stop on defense. So no real concern yet for Penn State here in the early going. Ohio State's defense looks like it's ready to feed off this crowd all game long. It's like having an extra player out there. It sure is, Brad. They are off to a great start in that opening series. Let's see how they play here. Again, trying to just set the tone here early in this game on this next series. And while they are the time, they know they can knock things up in a heartbeat. It's way too early to change. Twin tight set in, twin tight end set for the Nittany Lions. You see a short pass planned. Able to get the throw off and complete. Almost gets the first down. Howell takes eight on the play. The wide receiver number two slash tight end number two. He may not be the focal point of the Penn State offense, but he certainly has a big hand in it. Howell, of course, unrelated to the millionaire on Gilligan's Island. Arnold on the keeper, up the gut, breaks the tackle, gets the pitch off. It's a fumble, but Avery able to pick it up. They're going to call it a 10-yard gain on the ground. A little bit of, uh, I, I hesitate to call it sloppiness. It wasn't sloppiness on Penn State's part. They ran the play intelligently. The result of the play was sloppy. And it means Penn State's going to have to be somewhat attentive here. Halfback to the right side. Britt gets the catch and a couple more. Turns it into a six-yard gain. Now going to be second and four. Arnold three for three here in the early going. Four down lineman for the Buckeyes. Facing off against a single back set. Britt on the keeper, up the gut, gets one. Now going to set up third and short. Here in the first quarter. They get the completion. It's going to unfortunately be short of the first down, forcing a fourth down at uh, just barely across the midfield stripe. They're at the 48-yard line. And Penn State looks like they may be wanting to go for this early fourth down. The fullback up the gut, Carter, gets the first down and more as Penn State spends its fullback dive here in the first quarter. But worth the first down on the fourth down play. Twin tight ends now for the Indian Lions. Complete over the middle to Johnson. Jeremy Johnson with a seven-yard catch. He's got three for 14. That's going to end the first frame. We're early in the ball game. Ohio State leads by a score. Penn State driving. This game's already shaping up to be a good one as we head to the second quarter. 7-0, Buckeye. Two. 
Single back set for the Nittany Lions this time on second and three. Under pressure, Henry makes the catch. Arnold able to stand up in the pocket, takes the hit, gets rid of the football as Henry makes the catch for the first down. So far, Arnold 6-for-6 six six here in the early going. Quarterback keeper gets three. Perfectly acceptable result on first down. Now I'm going to set them up with second and seven as they're now inside Ohio State's 30-yard line at the 29 marker. Arnold back to pass, hits Britt over the middle. He's going to get the first down. I thought he might be a, a half a yard or a yard short on that play, but he does lean forward. He falls forward. He gets the first down. As Britt making an appearance in the passing game gives Arnold a 7-for-7 seven seven start. It's a fumble, but Penn State recovers. Arnold, 8 for 8. Penn State survives a scare. Ohio State able to lay the wood to the receiver after the catch. Forces the fumble. But Penn State now facing 1st and 10 within sight of the goal line. Quarterback keeper, Arnold over to the right side, gets eight. Now going to be second and short, second and, they're going to call it second and two from inside the two. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. We've got a seven to six ball game. Wally Holt now kicking off. It's going to go all the way through the paint, almost to the uprights, but about 12 to 15 yards outside the back of the end zone. Don't know what the wind is like right now, but that was a powerful kick. 25-yard line, the marker. Touchbacks on kickoffs go to the 25. Touchbacks on punts go to the 20. The 25 is where Ohio State begins. The left-handed quarterback able to hit Hart again. A one-yard catch. He's now got five for 22. As we're here in the early going in the second quarter. Daniels up the gut. Breaks the tackle. Almost gets the first down. Going to be third and inches now as the Buckeyes go to the no huddle. Daniels again up the gut. He gets five. That's going to be worth the first. He's off to a decent start with six and a half yards of carry with one touchdown. It's a screen pass, but entirely unsuccessful. Anthony Everett gets a loss of two. As plenty of Nittany Lions defenders were out there on the edge. 
ready for the play. Second long now for Ohio State. Another screen pass, well covered. There was a defender right there next to the halfback. It left the quarterback with no choice but to eat the ball. Never even tried to throw it. And multiple Penn State defenders make the sack, setting up third and a mile. Completion for seven is going to leave Ohio State at fourth and 15. Penn State gets the ball back inside their own 40 but in decent field position at their own 30, 35 yard line. Here in the early going, uh, we're in the first half still of a seven to seven ball game. Uh, it's Penn State looking to take control here in the early going. Ohio State scored first, Penn State responded. But clearly the talent level on both teams keeping the offenses in check. Almost sacked, but able to get the ball off to Henry for a 15-yard gain. That's about a 22-yard difference on that play. A half a second more, and we'd be looking at second and 17. Penn State coming out in the spread set. They got a tight end and three wide receivers. Quick pass to Britt out to the right side. He was open. They hit him quickly. It's a six yard gain on first down. Penn State hikes the ball quickly. And Britt is off to the races. The five touchdown Nittany Lions. It was the perfect call against that defense. A confluence of events that works out well into the Penn State favor. Fourteen seven, the score line as Penn State takes the lead for the first time today here in the second quarter. We're halfway through the frame as the Nittany Lions come out with a four-man front, facing off against the Buckeyes. Play action pass. It's incomplete as Church had to rush it. Only his second incompletion of the day. Although quite a few of those have been high percentage short throws. Got it. And he goes down. 
The catch by Hart for seven yards. Now going to set up third and short. Incompletion. Ohio State panicked there. And that's going to work out well in Penn State's favor. They're going to get the ball back here with 2.13 remaining in the half. Ahead by 7. Avery gets 6 on the return. Now going to be Penn State football. In their own territory with a few minutes before, there's a couple of minutes before the half. Hoping to extend the one score lead. Complete to Hawkins over the middle for nine. Not going to be second and one. Every coach's favorite down in distance. First and 10 from Ohio State's 40 as Penn State lines up with two tight ends. Three down linemen for the Buckeyes. The play action pass. And almost a sack and then a sack. Now going to be second and long. For the many lines. Arnold back to pass, looking almost intercepted, but instead caught. The ball found its way through the defender. Arnold now 13 for 13. Wide open is Johnson this time. He's going to get a 24-yard catch down to the two-yard line. Arnold, 14 for 14. Brit up the gut is stuffed for a loss of one. Now going to be second and goal. Howell tackled after a one-yard gain. They're at the two, facing third and goal. Arnold tackled for a loss on the play. Going to set up fourth and goal. And I think that Penn State probably is going to have to make a decision here 
Looks like they're going for the two-score lead, lining up for the field goal here. It's a short field goal, but they'll gladly take a 10-point lead here in the first half, especially given the fact that they started with the football. They need the two-score lead going into the halftime break. Up and between the pipes with seven seconds remaining, Penn State holds the 10-point lead. Out of the back of the end zone. It's going to save Ohio State a couple of seconds. They'll start from the 25. Looks like a Hail Mary formation could be in the books for the Buckeyes. But they're milking the clock and they're going to hand it off to Daniels. Breaks the first tackle. And the second, the third, and the fourth combine to take him down after a gain of eight. And that is going to do it for the first half of play. Oh, they call a timeout. Ohio State calls a timeout. Now going to have one more play with one second left. Let's see what happens. Makes the miracle catch for 53 yards, but it amounts to nothing as they don't have any time to do anything with it. We're going to go into the locker room with Penn State holding a 10-point lead here on the road at the shoe. We played 30 minutes. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 halftime show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. David Pollock and I here in the studio to break down everything that just happened in your game. Ball security was a major theme coming into this game, and both offensive coordinators have to be thrilled with the fact that their offenses, first and foremost, did a good job of taking care of the ball. And you don't see it uh, every game, that's for sure, that both teams don't have a turnover at the half, and you usually see those critical mistakes that set up a short field for you to take advantage of, and, and it's definitely nice. It's nice to be able to put in a plan all throughout the week and to be able to execute it and not to be able to make those big mistakes because coaches will tell you it's those big mistakes that kill you it's okay to be rushed in the pocket as a quarterback and then throw it to your mom in the third row don't throw it in harm's way both quarterbacks done a good job and as a result both teams with zero turnovers in the first half looking forward to seeing this second half i think there's certainly a want for victory a want and a need for victory some teams need this victory reese davis want need Got to go get it either way. Brad and Kirk are there to deliver. All right, Reese and David, thanks, guys. Second half action just about ready to start here. Nice kick, plenty of distance. And they can forget about returning this one. Penn State's the type of team, when you look at them, it looks like their defense sort of just feeds off itself. It, I think the energy is there, Brad, but I think it really starts up front with their defensive line and their linebackers, the way they're being able to just win the battle at the line of scrimmage. I think it's giving them confidence, and it's allowing them to play more downhill where they can attack this offense. There's got to be some sense of urgency to this offense right now. They don't have the luxury of wasting drives if they want to get back in the game. Throws complete, and he's hit right away. He fights forward to about the 33. Third and short now as Ohio State facing off against the Penn State defense. Gets the completion over the middle. Going to be first down close to the midfield stripe.
Church goes back to pass, hits Johnson for two yards on first down. Now going to be second and eight. We'll see what Penn State has in store for them on defense. Daniels gets two up the gut, going to set up third and a medium distance. Five yards, the marker. Man in motion, left to right. Penn State throws it away again. Sorry, Ohio State throws it away again. There's been a couple of occasions where Ohio State has thrown the ball away, making the quote-unquote smart play, granting the Nittany Lions an incompletion on defense. The pass rush by the Penn State Nittany Lions, so far, effective. And you know, when you have the fundamentals and the technique that he has where he's wrapping up, he always seems to be in the perfect position. It's really no wonder that he has so many tackles. If they allow a touchdown on this series, the crowd might become too despondent to even be a factor. Penn State with a real chance here to take control of the football game. We'll see what they do to get this drive started. As they begin from their own 38, excellent field position for the start of a drive on offense. Off to the right side is Johnson, wide receiver number one for Penn State. He gets eight yards on first down. Not going to be second and short. So it's second down and about two yards to go. Twin tight ends, twin halfbacks. Shotgun split big for Penn State. Four down linemen for the Buckeyes. Triple option to the left. Arnold on the keeper, able to get the first down and more. Picks up eight. He's got six for 22 on the ground. First and 10, though. Ohio State now facing the Nittany Lions in their own territory. Three wide receivers tied into the right side with the halfbacks on the left. As Penn State back to pass. Hits the completion over the middle. Howell gets three. Second and seven, ball on the 44 yard line. Second and seven, the down and distance. Ohio State, four down linemen once again. Penn State, shotgun Y trips. Hits the halfback out of the backfield. Britt breaks the tackle, breaks the second. It's the third and fourth tackler to take him down. But not until he gets a huge gain. As Arnold now, 18 for 18 passing. That was, uh... From the 27 yard line, it's first down. Penn State out in a shotgun normal. Halfway through the third quarter, holding a two-score lead. Complete but immediately hit is Britt. He's only going to get two out of that. Going to be second and long here facing Penn State as they have the ball at the Ohio State 25-yard line. They're in field goal range at this point in time and moving the football. Second and eight. 
Complete to Johnson over the middle. He gets a yard. Now going to be third and seven. But the ball is in the middle of the field. Giving Penn State, Penn State plenty of options here. On third down. Twenty-four yard line, the marker. Five wide receivers for the native lines. Arnold are uh, unusually not showing that he's heated up. Back to pass. It's the first incompletion for Arnold, and Penn State's going to be forced to settle for the field goal attempt. Arnold now 20 for 21. He completed his first 20 passes of the ball game. I'm not sure, but that may be a league record. Field goal up and good. Wally Holt, Mr. Dependable for the Nittany Lions, gets him three points, now holding a 13-point lead late in the third quarter. Ohio State needs action, and they need it now. Penn State able to take a few minutes off the clock there and get points. Almost the ideal scenario for the Indian Lions holding the lead. Penn State coming out with the 3-3-5. As Church hits Sims over the middle for a 20-yard gain to get this drive started. Incomplete pass. Church now 16 for 21. The two quarterbacks so far, 36 for 42 combined. Ohio State 3 out of 7 on the day for third downs. Daniels slips past the potential tackler. His elusiveness able to get him beyond the line of scrimmage. An 18-yard gain means he's got 10 for 69, 6.9 yards of carry on the day. Daniels again to the right side. Another big gain. 35 yards in the last two carries. This time, Penn State keys on Daniels. Puts a stop to that. Now, second and nine from about the, looks like, 11 or 12-yard line. Daniels trucks his way forward for three yards. Going to set up third and six. It'll be interesting to see what Penn State calls here in response to what Ohio State calls here. Another throwaway by Ohio State, this time on third down once again. And Penn State's going to hold them to a field goal attempt. Ohio State taking the safe route by throwing the ball away, but they are beginning to run out of time in this ballgame. Penn State well in control. The field goal is up and good. Going to draw them back to within a touchdown and a field goal. But so far, Penn State's defense doing a good job against Ohio State. Hines, 
Whatever he gets the ball at the goal line. He's at the 30, the 40, just past the 40. A 40 yard return. Since the opening drive punt, Ohio State unable to slow down the Penn State offense as the Nittany Lions put 20 points up on the board. Arnold back to pass. It's his second incompletion of the day. Coach Ninja and Daniel Arnold playing well for Penn State today. Arnold 20 for 25 as Coach Ninja leads the Penn State offense back on the field. We've got twin tight ends and two halfbacks and a shotgun big. It's the option to the right. Arnold, it's a fumble, and again, the second time today that Penn State has put the ball on the ground and been able to recover it. Both potential turnovers, huge, in Penn State maintaining their lead, now facing third and seven. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. We now move to the fourth. Second and eight, the down and distance. Penn State looking to put a stop to this right now. As Jermaine Walker has to dive behind him, erasing any good blocking, erasing any potential to get yards after the catch, and now resulting in third and long. Penn State forces the punt after the turnover. A difficult thing to do. Sometimes momentum can get the best of you in this football game. But Penn State able to respond to their own turnover and then force a three and out. Twin tight end set, two halfbacks, shotgun, split big. Arnold oh, back to pass. Incomplete. It's another interception. Mills with his second interception here on back-to-back -back plays for the Penn State offense. And Arnold suddenly going from 20 out of 22 to 20 out of 24 with two picks. Ohio State gets a second chance at this comeback effort here with six minutes remaining. They're going to throw it horizontally. It's Oregon Ducks style football. It's Chip Kelly style football. Horizontal football. 
as I like to think of it, pansy football. I'm of the old school. Either you punch him in the mouth or you're not even playing. So far, all that horizontal play resulting in third and long once again for the Buckeyes. Church hits Everett. He breaks the tackle. Gets the first down. Picks up 20. Now down to the 31-32 yard line. We'll see where they mark it. Facing first and 10. With five minutes remaining. Johnson in motion for the Buckeyes. Everett eludes the tackler and he is off to the races into the end zone we've got ourselves a three-point ball game and that's his second touchdown of the day when heisman voters are trying to decide who will get their support they're going to be thinking about performances like this one he's having here today here's the extra point to get within a field goal and he hits the pat reese davis joins us in the studio with this update reese the Hurricanes enter the day ranked fourth. That is now in the past tense. How far will they fall? And for Georgia Tech, they've won eight games on the season. And it looks like they're ready for the kickoff. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. Time's running short here, so let's see what plays out. This offense 20 to 17, the score line. 4.58, the time remaining. First and 10, the down and distance, and the 25 yard line, the marker. Incomplete. Mills. Two interceptions and a deflection on his last three plays. You can bet Coach Ninja will be looking for him coming out of the huddle. The convenience, of course, that he's marked with an impact player star. Multiple wide receivers for Penn State. They throw it over the middle. Howell able to get the first down. Uh, sorry, able to get the catch and a few more. Turns five into eight, and now we've got third and two. 33-yard line, the marker. Arnold back to pass out of the five wide. Hits Johnson, gets the first down, makes the catch, and then gets four. His eighth catch of the day, 73 yards. He might be the only player on the Penn State offense still heated up. You see Arnold there cold. Britt somewhat warm. The halfback out of the backfield. Complete to Johnson over the middle. He gets three. Now second and seven. Penn State facing a cold quarterback who's thrown two interceptions. 3.52 remaining as they try to salt away this football game. Britt up the gut. The run takes Ohio State off guard. To be fair, Penn State's run a few more passing plays than running plays recently. That run benefiting from that play calling. Halfway through the third, sorry, halfway through the fourth quarter. We're close to midfield. Arnold takes the sack, going to be second in a mile. The Ohio State defense rearing its head. They brought in multiple blitzers. 
They brought in six men on the rush, two blitzers. One was picked up. The second one came free. It's going to result in a second and long here for Penn State. Hit as he throws, but he completes the pass, gets the first, no, sorry, gets the catch and an extra few first, uh, for, uh, extra few yards. Big play after the catch. That's going to give them third and approachable. Third and five now on the Ohio State 44-yard line, 220 remaining in the football game. Both teams still with three timeouts. Ohio State back to pass. Gets the completion. Henry makes the catch. It's a nine-yard gain, and Ohio State calls their first timeout with 2.09 remaining. They're going to call it the 34. It's halfway between the 34 and 35. It's first and 10 for Penn State. They come out with three wide receivers, a tight end, and a halfback. Sacked. Down goes Arnold again. Another second and long. In a crucial situation, Ohio State hoping to stop this Penn State drive. The Nittany Lions now going to need 18 yards on two plays to keep the football. Complete to Henry. Breaks the tackle. Gets the first down. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what it is. Clipping is the call. Where's the spot? They're going to call it second and 20. Clipping can go a lot of ways. It depends on where it happens, whether it was before the catch, after the catch, where the ball was on the field. In this case, it works against Penn State. They're now facing second and longer. Almost sacked. Arnold able to get rid of the football. Barely. Now going to be third in a mile. Third and 20. Low percentage plays. High risk plays. The order of the day here on this down and distance. Penn State, however, holds the lead. He's complete. He's inside. It looks like he's inside field goal range, but he's going to be short of the first down. Going to be fourth and one. A really tough decision for Penn State. Do they take the six-point lead, or do they go for fourth down, knowing that if they don't get it, that Ohio State's going to have all the momentum in the world and have a chance to win this football game? Special teams unit coming out on the field. Kick is up against 13 mile an hour winds, but it's well good. A 42 yard field goal. Wally Holt looking good on that one. Easily good. 42 yard kick against a 13 mile an hour wind. Wasn't even close. Now 148 remaining, and Penn State's defense left with the task of winning this football game, maintaining national title hopes for the fifth-ranked Nittany Lions. This is 
Number five versus number seven. This is the battle for the Big Ten East Division. We're in week 12 here in League One. This is season 11 of League One. Late in the year, a sack is going to put Ohio State in quite the hole. Ohio State spikes the ball. They'd rather have the time than the down. We'll see if that pays off for them. Penn State, third and 16, working in their favor. Unbelievable completion in tight coverage. Walker gets the first down. I cannot believe that the ball found its way to the receiver on that play. But it results in a fresh set of downs here with 125 remaining. The lefty church back to pass. It's caught but then dropped. Big hit by number 36 for Penn State. Ohio State still has 64 yards to go. Facing second and ten with a minute and eighteen left. Church hits Daniels. He makes the first down. Gets a few more. It's across the midfield stripe. There's only a minute and ten remaining. And once again, Ohio State has no timeouts. They're going to go with the no huddle. And Penn State responds. Incompletion is going to stop the clock. Both teams get a chance to go back to the huddle. Barely in Penn State territory. Second and ten, a minute and four remaining. McIntyre gets the first down by an inch. Falls forward past the marker. And you see there Ohio State spiking the ball, stopping the clock with less than a minute remaining. The Penn State defense knows they can give up five. They can give up ten. They cannot give up the touchdown. The field goal on a previous drive allowing Penn State that luxury. Singletary gets his hand on the ball. It's only going to count for a deflection. If he'd made that catch, he ought to be playing wide receiver. As it stands, though, that's going to force third and long now for the Buckeyes. Fourth down now. Josie's on a vacation far away. Curl around and talk it over. So many things that I want to say. You know I love my girls a little bit older. Fuck I just want to use your love tonight. I don't want to lose your love tonight. Unbelievable fourth down conversion by Ohio State. Sets them up on the Penn State 19-yard line. Yeah. 
Complete to right over the middle. First and goal from about the six-yard line. We've got only 36 seconds remaining in the football game. Ohio State with no timeouts. They're going to stay with the no huddle and spike the ball once again. 31 seconds now. Second and goal. Second goal from the six-yard line. The Buckeyes, a tight end, three receivers. Interception. Riley makes the interception at the four-yard line. And with no timeouts remaining, that is the ball game. Marcus Church throws the pick inside the 10-yard line. Riley coming up with a massive play to save the game. Penn State right to have faith in their defense. They were right to kick the field goal on fourth and one. They were right to put the ball in the hands of those 11 players on that side of the ball. Led by Riley with the massive, massive interception inside the five. That is going to set the stage for the end of this ball game. That's it, folks. Penn State's going to escape with a 23-17 to win. Well-coached game by Coach Ninja. Penn State beating another top 10 team. They beat Michigan last week. They're making a late season push for the national championship. They're fifth right now, but they have two losses. Going to be interesting to see what happens after this game with the rankings. Going to be interesting to see because we have three users in the top five. We're in week 12 now. We've only got three weeks remaining. Penn State, uh, 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 as you remember, if you've watched this season, has a massive win over number two, the other user involved. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the polls. It's going to be interesting to see how this thing shapes up. But that was a massive interception by Riley, the man of the day, the man of the hour. Riley coming up with a huge play for Penn State. Game-saving interception. A touchdown by Ohio State at that point in the game with 30 seconds left would have put, put, put Penn State in quite the hole. As it stands now, though, they remain alive in the national championship hunt. You can join us next week as both number one Washington State and number five Penn State will take on teams in week 13 as we wind down Season 11 of League One Action. We thank you for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful week, that you kick the shit out of it, and we hope to see you next Friday night.